Guatemala, Lincoln, it's a joy, pleasure, and a privilege to be back in your midst uh, here again today in this uh, wet uh, first day of spring uh, here in your city to bring to you the glad tidings, the good news, the gospel, God's everlasting gospel that ever saves and saves those who come to his son Jesus Christ, the good news that God so loved the world, that's written in God's word, don't you know, indelibly, it hasn't changed in 2,000 years and it never will change. God so loved the world, so loved you, city of Lincoln, that he gave, gave his son, his only begotten son, gave him up to the death of the cross, that is, to die for sinners, Christ is Lincoln. Christ is dead for your sins. Come to him. Believe in him. Amen. Because whosoever believes shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The gift of God, the gift of his Son, sent into the world to save even Lincoln City sinners. You'd like to have a a copy of God's Word. This is uh, John's Gospel. You can read those very words for yourself here in this Gospel booklet. Uh, God so loved the world. Uh, chapter 3 and verse 16. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word. His written Word, that is, is offered to you freely and uh, without any cost or any obligation to you. Feel free to come and ask for one gladly placed into your hands, freely offered, freely received, the written word of God. But of course you could go one better. You could receive the living word of God. Amen. Even Jesus, even the Savior, the only Savior, the only mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. We need a mediator. We need somebody to stand between us. We need somebody to defend us from God, the one that we've offended, the one that we've sinned against, and whose law we've broken. And Jesus, he's that mediator. He's the one who came. He's the one sent of God, sent of his Father, and sent into this world to die upon that cross in order to mediate on our behalf. That is... He died to bring us, to bring you, a Lincoln City sinner, to bring you to God, to bring you back to God, that is, because we need bringing back to Him, because we're not able to get back ourselves. We're unable, we're unwilling, we're undesirous, we are, well, we're estranged from God, alienated from God. And of course, uh, well, Jesus, he's the only one who can bring us back to God. That's what he came for. That's what he loves to do. That's what he's doing today. I tell you the world over. And over the gospel, this gospel, the only gospel that I declare to you today in order that, that men and women might be reconciled to God. And he's doing that. He's doing that the world over today. Men and women are coming to hear, hearken to, listen to the gospel, take heed to what God has done, the provision that he has made, and, <coughs> and trusting in, believing into Jesus, that is, confiding in him fully and completely, nothing and nobody else, trusting in Jesus and finding God to be true. God to be faithful, and God to be a saviour, a saviour of sinners. And sin that we need saving from, because it's effect, the effect of sin, the working of sin. Well, it's abroad in your world. Can't you see it? It's abroad in your society. Can't you see it? It breaks, it destroys mankind, it destroys men and women. It takes the life out of you. No life to be found in the world, no, no life to be found 
no, no life to be found in the pleasures of sin. No, there's nothing but death there. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God. The free gift, I tell you. His son, Jesus. The inexpressible gift of God. Jesus, the son of God. The free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord, whom I declare to you here today in the city of Lincoln. You take the gift, the free gift. You take his son. You take him and you get life. You get eternal life instead of death. That's the deal. How are you doing, sir? Are you alright? I'm very good, sir. I'm not in the way. I like you very much. <laughs> you are you a believer, sir? I am, yes, I'm born again, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Please hear it. Give me your hand. Pleased to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, too. And you too, sir. Yeah. Warm, yeah. Yes, have a nice day, sir. <laughs> Can't beat it, sir. Have a good day. So, yeah, yeah, you see, there's more. There's another one. Yeah, none of my own. None of my own. There's plenty of us. There's more of us than you uh, that you might imagine who have found Jesus to be a savior, who have found Jesus to be honest, sincere, and faithful. He tells us, he tells us the truth, you know. Not to heart, not to heart. He tells us the truth, you know, in order that we might be set free, liberated from, well, from that which does hurt you, that which will hurt you, and hurt you eternally. He tells us the truth in order that we, that we might be set free. But of course, the truth upsets us, you know, uh, initially at least anyway, because, well, we all think ourselves to be better, better than we really are. We think ourselves, you know, to be good people. That's, that's what people say to me. I get it day after day. They say, I, I'm a good person. What's wrong with me? You know? Uh, so, well, God's testimony, his, his, he says there's none good, sir. Not you, not me, none of us. None of us. None good, says God. None, none who does good. None who does good, none, none capable of good, none righteous, not a single one of us. We all like sheep have gone astray, wandered our own pathway, and our own pathway is the pathway of sin, neglecting God, rejecting God, denying the very existence of God, living apart from God, and that's not living, that's death, because there's no life apart from God in Jesus Christ his Son. But the good news is, you see, that Jesus tells us, he tells us this truth. He tells us what we really, really are like, you know, that we are sinful, that we are, that we are sinful, that we are guilty. You too, sir. That we are guilty, that we are to blame, that we are covered with shame. And one day, of course, well, that will be your state, that will be your condition for all eternity, unless, that is, unless you receive the gift of God. But here's the good news. Christ died for you. Christ died for your sins. Christ laid down his life for your sins, that you might be set free from sin and death and hell, the consequences, the full consequences of sin. And here you are. This is what the, the psalmist here today, the word of God for you today. And this is what he pleads for. He says, draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief, evil, is in their hearts, because they regard not the works of the Lord. Draw me not away with the wicked, he says. Says this man, that ought to be your prayer. That ought to be your that ought to be mine. That ought to be that ought to be the desire of us all. That God draw you not away with the wicked. Because what's he gonna do with the wicked? Huh? What's he gonna do with them, sir? I tell you, he's gonna draw them away to hell. That's the end of their wickedness. That's the end of the evil. Yes, the evil heart of unbelief. You don't even have to express it. You don't even have to see it. You don't even have to do the wicked. 
It's just the evil heart of unbelief, sir. That's enough for you to be drawn away with the wicked into hell in that day when God judges you. Don't let her draw you away. Listen, sir. Listen, Christ died for your sins, sir. God loves you. Receive the gift of God, eternal life. Don't walk away without him, sir. So like I say, friends, the gift of God, eternal life to Jesus Christ, his son. Draw me not away with the wicked, he says. But how can you avoid that? How can you avoid not being drawn away with the wicked? How is that possible? Lincoln City sinners. Only if Jesus saves you. Only if you receive the gift of God. Only if you believe in Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can be saved. That's the only way out of the wickedness. That's the only way of deliverance. That's the only way by which you can escape the wickedness of your own heart, the wickedness of this world, the wicked and evil that abounds in your world today. That's the only way that you can escape being drawn away with the wicked and drawn away to where? Well, the final outworking of sin, the final consequence, the judgment day, the day when God will judge all men by His Son, Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells it. No such thing as God. That's rubbish, sir. You know better than that, sir. You've been around long enough to know better than that. The fool says in his heart there is no God. Oh, no, no, my friends, you know better than that. You know better than that. You know that God is. Yep. But no, of course, that's wickedness, you see. That's the wickedness that you need saving from, that Jesus came to deliver you from, to bring you to reality. So not to be drawn, how can you not be drawn away with the wicked? That's the end of all men. That's the end, the end of all mankind. Without Jesus, without the Son of God, without God's love. God so loved the world that you might not be drawn away with the wicked. On that day of judgment, God has appointed the day. The Bible says He has appointed the day. The day is marked on God's calendar. In fact, I would submit to you, I would say to you, my friends, it's the next, it's the next big event on God's calendar Amen. presently, Hallelujah. the day of judgment. Yes. Amen. God has appointed a day in which he has given notice to the world that he intends to judge the world, all mankind that is, how by his son Jesus Christ, whom he has raised from the dead. So draw me not away with the wicked. Well, there's only one way. If you're found amongst that company in that day when God judges you, amongst the masses, the majority, sad to say, because the majority will not avail themselves of the provision that God has made for them, for their salvation. But I tell you, whoever you are, I tell you, whatever you are, I tell you, whatever kind of sinner you are, Whatever kind of transgressor you are, whatever kind of worker of iniquity you are, lawless person that is, however much you've broken God's law in whichever way it is, maybe all your days calling yourself an atheist, maybe arguing against God, blaspheming His holy and lovely name. Is that what you are? A Lincoln City blasphemer? Or a <coughs> On a fornicator, sexually immoral person of the of the worst and deepest dire, I tell you, there's no sin deeper than the grace of God in Jesus Christ. I tell you, even the war, e even the reprobate have a warrant to believe on Jesus Christ, and here it is. Here's your warrant to believe. Here's your warrant to believe the gospel. That there is a gospel and that's being declared amongst you here today in the city of Lincoln. This is your warrant to believe, Lincoln City sinners. Amen. The worst of you and the best of you, I tell you, come to Jesus and
but it will save you. And you will not be drawn away with the wicked in that day when God judges you. So maybe, perhaps, maybe you've never prayed in your life before. And you say, you say to me, I don't know how to. I don't know how to pray. I wouldn't know where even to begin. Oh, well, here you are. Draw me not away with the wicked. That would do for a start, wouldn't it? Cry out to God that he would have mercy on you. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. The Bible's testimony. Whosoever, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall not be disappointed, shall not be ashamed, shall not be drawn away with the wicked. Draw me not away with the wicked. That prayer, that will do it. On your knees, cry out to God. Draw me not away with the wicked, but save me, deliver me from my wicked heart of unbelief. From all my sins, from all my sins, deep died sins. Sir, I told you that. Noise pollution. Noise pollution. You're silly, sir. Don't be silly. Just because you hate God, just because you hate Him, get rid of that hatred, sir. He loves you. He sent His Son to die for your sins, sir. And you oppose Him. You oppose him. You'll, you'll stand in judgment before God for that, sir. Repent today and believe in Jesus Christ that you might be saved. You can't, you can't, you can't, si you can silence me. You silence my voice. You can't silence, God will not be silenced. His speech is heard in all creation. All creation itself is the voice of God. His every providence in your life is the voice of God. He's speaking to you day by day. The trouble is you're stone deaf. You haven't got ears to hear. That's your problem. And even through the gospel they preach to you today, his voice is heard amongst you. But are you hearing? My sheep hear my voice. My sheep, they hear my voice, Jesus says. They follow me and I give unto them eternal life. But do you hear? Can you hear his voice? Or is it just the voice of a man that you hear? Do you hear the voice of the good shepherd? The one who can save you, deliver you. And the one who can give you the deep died assurance that you will not be drawn away with the wicked, but that will be your end. Lincoln City Center, that will be your end, I tell you. If you do not receive the free gift of God, if you do not, if you do not trust in the love of God, if you do not trust in the Son of God, that will be your end. Be assured, God has given testimony. There is a place called hell, but there's also a place called heaven. There's also a place called heaven. For the righteous, only the righteous dwell. But to be drawn to heaven, only Jesus can draw you to heaven. Only Jesus can take you there. Only faith in the Son of God can take you there. But otherwise, without Jesus, you live in God's world. You breathe His air. You breathe your last. And you go out of this world without Jesus. Without Him as your Savior without him in your heart, without having believed into Jesus Christ, you go out of this world, I tell you, I testify on behalf of God here today, you will be drawn away with the wicked. In that day, it is appointed unto man once to die. After that then comes the judgment. Drawn away with the wicked, Draw me not away with the wicked, the man said. So, in order not to be drawn away with the wicked, you must needs be drawn to Jesus. You must be needs drawn to the Son of God. You, needs, you must needs be drawn to the cross. And that's beyond my pay grade. 
Only God Himself could do that. But He does. He does. He does, sir. He does. He does. But you're the cause of it. I'm not. We all are. We all are. Well, what are you paying for then? What? What are you paying for? I'm still believing. No, 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 no. No, I don't think so, sir. I'm afraid. Hey, listen, come and talk to me. I'm afraid for everyone. Listen. Listen. People stop dying. No, no, that, that's the wrong prayer. That's the wrong prayer. Draw me not away with the wicked. That's your prayer. That's your prayer. God deliver you from your evil heart of unbelief. Yeah? Cause you. Hey. Have a nice day, sir. Have a nice day. Draw me not away with the wicked. Draw me not away with the wicked. That's your prayer, Lincoln City Center. God have mercy on you and draw you to his son, draw you to the cross. That's the starting place, Lincoln City Center. That's the starting place. In order not to be drawn away with the wicked, God himself has to draw you to his son. But how does he draw sinners to his son? He draws sinners to his son through the preaching of the gospel, that which I and my brothers are doing here today. That's how God accomplishes it, through the preaching of the gospel. Foolishness to those who are perishing, says God, but the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. God draw you, draw you to his son, draw you to the cross and see, behold, the love of God, behold, the Lamb of God, dying for your sins, Lincoln City sinners, dying for your sins, Christ is dead for your sins, and alive to justify you, make you right with God. But God must draw you to the preaching of my gospel, this lovely, lovely gospel. This great news, great news for Lincoln City sinners, for the most wicked sinner, the most rebellious, the most disgusting sinner that ever walked the face of this earth. I tell you, there's hope for you. There's hope, Lincoln, but it's in the gospel. It's only in the gospel. There's hope for the wicked. There's hope for unbelievers. There's hope for sinners. But it's in Jesus. He's the gift of God. The wages of sin is death. But the gift, the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord. It's in receiving Him, the gift of God. It's receiving Jesus. And receiving Him, you receive eternal life, eternal love, eternal salvation. You will not be drawn away with the wicked, but you will be saved. Salvation, salvation is what God is about. Salvation is what my, my Savior Jesus is about. He loves to save. He delights in salvation. Judgment is a strange work. Salvation, that's what he came for. He came to heal and he came to save. He did not come to destroy man's life. It's sin that does that. It's wickedness that does that. It's unbelief that does that. It's living apart from God that does that. Destroys man's life. But Jesus came to heal. He came to reconcile. He came to save. And he's doing that today and would do that for you today should you come to him. Should you put your trust, your confidence in him and Jesus, you would not and you will not in that day when God judges you, you will not be drawn away with the wicked. But then he goes on to say, we speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief evil is in their heart. Evil is in their hearts. The wicked, that is. The evil heart of unbelief. There's the root of the problem, the heart. That's why Jesus says, on another occasion, he says, you must be born again. 
Except a man must be born again, he cannot see, he cannot understand the kingdom of God. Because the heart's the heart of the problem. The heart's disease desperately wicked, says God. There has to be a change of heart. But that was offered to you today. That's what's freely offered to you in the gospel today. That's what God in his love offers you today, Lincoln City Sinners. A new heart, a new start, a new beginning. Possible for an old man, an old woman to begin all over again. A clean slate, a new heart, a new beginning. Life, life from the dead. A heart full of light. The dead removed, raised, resurrected, out of your tomb of unbelief, and into the light, into the marvelous, marvelous light of God. My prayer for you, Lincoln City sinners today, and my hope for you is that God would command the light to shine into your hearts and minds and reveal the love and the knowledge of himself in his son Jesus Christ. Through the preaching of the gospel, that which we're doing here today, that you might be made alive, that your heart might be changed because the heart's the heart of the problem. Young man, just a, just a few moments ago, complaining about all the evil, the wicked in the world, and all the death, all the dying. Where does it come from? It comes out of the hearts of men and women all over the world, pumping out of our hearts day by day. Wickedness. It's men that destroy the world, not God. God is not responsible for the evil of mankind. Man is. You are. I am. We all are. So don't, don't be complaining to God about the evil, about the death and carnage. That lies at the feet of men. That lies in the hearts of all men and women, yours and mine alike. And that's why the heart must be changed. Because until you change the heart, you get no change with the man or the woman. If a tree is corrupt, can you get good fruit from it? Of course you cannot. But you make the tree good and the fruit will be good. Can you get good fruit out of your evil heart of unbelief, sir? Huh? Can you get good fruit? Can you get good fruit out of a, a wicked, hearted, unbelieving sinner? Can you get good fruit? Of course you can. But make the heart good, make the heart good, and you will make the fruit of a man or woman's life good. So the heart must be changed. There must be a heart change. The heart is deceitful above all things, says God, <coughs> and, de <coughs> and desperately wicked. Can you bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not possible not possible. How can you bring anything clean out of your heart? But here's the good news. Jesus died. Jesus died for your sins, Lincoln City sinners, that your heart might be washed and made clean. Don't you know? Don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? And the Bible goes on to give us a list I get a list of what unrighteousness means. Fornication, sexual immorality, blasphemy, murder, killing, all the things that lie in your heart and all the things that come out of your heart. Every single one of you. Out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, says Jesus, that you turn into murder, that you turn into blasphemy, that you turn into all kinds of evil and wickedness that's the heart of man that's the heart of man that's where the evil comes from but you change the heart until you change the heart you don't change 
You don't change the man, you don't change the woman. And you can't change your heart. You can't change your heart, you can't change. You can't change your mind. Huh? You can't even change your own mind. No. No, that's why Jesus came. That's why God so loved the world. Because a mankind of sinners with evil hearts of unbelief, a mankind of sinners God so loved that he gave the gift, the free gift of his son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him, you come to Jesus, what for? Well, you come to him for him first of all to receive him. And you come to him and he gives you a new heart. He gives you a clean slate. He gives you a, a new start. He washes and he makes you clean. He washes and he makes you clean. He makes your heart clean. He changes your heart. He gives you, he gives you different desires. Desires that you never had before. To please God. To love your neighbor. To be good. To be good and to do good. Only God can give a man, only God can give a woman such a heart as that. But it's the heart that's the problem. And religion doesn't touch your heart. You can be as religious as you please. You can join the Salvation Army. They give you, they give you a nice uniform to wear. But that won't change your heart. You can, you can join the Islamic religion. And you can dress the way that Muhammad did. That won't change your heart. You can go to the mosque, the synagogue, the temple, the church. That won't change your heart. Being religious and doing religious things, that doesn't change the hearts of men and women. Only God can, only God can accomplish that. By His Spirit. That's why Jesus says you must be born again. The heart must be changed. The heart must be made good. But that's what Jesus came for. That's why God sent his son Jesus into the world. Because nobody else can change a man's heart but Jesus. Come to him. Believe on him. Trust in him. Trust into him. Into Jesus. Receive the free gift of God. change of heart that only Jesus, only he can bring about. It's the work of God because they regard not the works of the Lord. Because they regard not the works of God. That's why men and women are drawn away with the wicked because they regard not the works of God. What are the works of God? Creation. Creation. God made everything. In six literal days, 24 hour periods, God by his word of power made everything. But you regard not the work of God's creation. You say it happened by the foolishness of evolution. And so you get drawn away with the wicked. Everything that happens in the world, even the sparrow that falls to the ground, even the rain coming down today in the city of Lincoln is the work of God. It's His providence. Everything that happens in all the world, in all creation, is the work of God. But you deny it. You just say, oh, it's bad luck. It's a bad day. You deny the existence of God. And you deny the work of God. You deny the creation of God. You deny the providence of God, but the work of God in salvation and giving His only begotten Son. God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. That whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But as long as you live in denial of the gospel, as long as you live in unbelief, as long as you continue on, with your head buried in, your, in the sand, thinking that nobody sees you, that God doesn't see you. That's a delusion. Lincoln City sinners, 
that you need curing from even today if you will be so. Do not deny the works of God. Do not deny his works. Lincoln City Sinners, it's obvious as plain as the nose on your face, the invisible things of God are clearly seen by all the things that he has made. You are without excuse. You know that God is. Your problem is that you deny him. The problem is that you hate him. The problem is that you hate God and you hate your neighbor. But Jesus came to cure you of that. Jesus came to heal you, sir. Came to make you well, sir. Came to redeem you, sir. God so loved you. Lincoln City sinners. And Jesus died for your sins in order that you might be delivered from that obvious denial of what is obviously true and apparent even before your very eyes. So draw me not away with the wicked, he says. Draw me not away with the wicked. Draw me not down into the pit, in other words. Draw me not down into the damnation of hell. Draw me not down into the darkness, the everlasting darkness. Draw me not away with the wicked, says the psalmist. That's your prayer, Lincoln City Center. That's your prayer today. Cry out to him. Call out to him. Give him no rest until he comes to you, until he draws you to himself, until he draws you to his son, Jesus, that you might be saved, that you might be drawn to the cross, that you might be drawn to salvation, that you might not be drawn away with the wicked. Today, Lincoln City Center, if you will hear his voice, heart not your hearts, as many, many have done in the past and do today. Heart not your hearts, but today, today, today could be the day of change. Come to him, to Jesus. Come to him, the Son of God, mighty to save died for your sins. Nobody else did that for you. Mohammed never did that, sir, for sinners. He never did that for you. He can't do that for you. Only Jesus. He died for your sin. I tell you, there, there's Muslims. There's Muslims, I tell you. Parts of the world, many, many are, are forsaking their dead religion and turning to Jesus and finding life, love, forgiveness, salvation. Don't put your trust in religion, Roman Catholic religion, Salvation Army religion, or any other kind of religion. Don't put your trust even in a, even in a church. Our trust is not in that. Our church is in Jesus, a person the person of the Son of God and what he did. God loved you and Jesus died for your sins. That's, that's the evidence. That's the evidence, sir. That's the evidence. God loves you and Christ died for your sins is the evidence of that love. Receive the love of God. Receive the salvation of God. How? Receive the Son of God. Receive Christ. He's the one on offer today. Not the benefits. Christ himself. You receive Christ and you receive the benefit. What's the benefit? Salvation, eternal life, forgiveness, love of the last thing. But you must receive Christ, Jesus. He's the one who's on offer here today. Take him. The free gift of God. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, whom I offer you here today, take and receive him. He came to his own, but his own did not receive him, but to as many as did receive him, to them he gave the right, the power, the authority to become what? Children of God. 
I love, love everlastingly. Love forever and ever. Never not to be loved again. Receiving Jesus. Sir, sir, why, why don't you grow up? Why don't you grow up, sir? Think that might happen one day? Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. The older they get, the worse they get. Dear friends, Jesus is set before you. The gift of God is offered to you today. Salvation. Jesus, the Son of God, mighty to save Lincoln City Center. All of them, I tell you, there's not a man, there's not a woman in the city of Lincoln today who is beyond, beyond repair. There's no sin, I tell you, deeper, deeper than the grace of God in Jesus, his Son. He sent his Son, Jesus, to save you, to die for your sin. Receive the gift of God. Receive the gift of God. Receive the Son of God. Receive Jesus. And you will not, never, ever be drawn away with the wicked in that day. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Repent and believe the gospel. Lincoln City Center, repent and believe the gospel. Repent, 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 repent and believe the gospel and receive the gift of God, the salvation of God. Receive eternal life today. Believe, repent and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand so close to you. You'd like to have a copy of God's written word offered to you freely. Take, read, meditate. See the lovely Son of God who died for your sins. Read about him. He's altogether lovely. The fairest of 10,000. The Rose of Sharon. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, years even today, should you, that is, but come to him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. If you'd like to have a copy of God's work, please come and ask for one. May God bless you, Lincoln. May God bless you and of mercy, mercy I see upon your precious, Precious, never die in soul.